Well, 531,000 new jobs were added to the US economy in October after two straight months of disappointing gains. The US Labor Department's latest non-farm payrolls report also show the unemployment rate edged lower last month to 4.6%. It's the biggest jump in a single month since July and shows demand for workers is picking up amid widespread labor and supply shortages. It follows hugely disappointing figures for August when just 235,000 jobs were added. That was less than a third of what was expected, while September's figures also badly missed forecasts. Even though employment has grown each month this year, the US economy remains more than 5 million jobs short of pre-pandemic levels. Christian Lawrence is a senior cross-asset strategist at Rabobank in New York. He told us what drove jobs growth in the US last month. Certainly much better figures for October. And the other thing to note is not only were 531,000 jobs added in October, but there were actually some revisions made to the August and September numbers as well. So an additional 235,000 across those two months. So it turned out that, yes, those data from those previous months were disappointing, but not quite as disappointing as we thought at the time. So the momentum is certainly picking up as we move into the winter months, but there is still a long way to go. If we continue at the current pace, then the gap between um, in jobs between now and uh, pre-COVID levels is likely to be unwound by July, which is, of course, when the Fed plans to end its QE uh, um, uh, additions of liquidity to the system. So those two events should coincide with each other in the middle of next year. Today's jobs numbers did actually show quite a widespread increase in jobs right across sectors. But we are still feeling the impact of the government stimulus checks that were handed out, the additional benefits. They did run out in September, but these things operate with a lag and household balance sheets were relatively shored up over the last 18 months. So I think as we move into 2022, we are going to see a lot of those people move back to the workforce. But the participation rate in general is over two percentage points lower than it was pre-COVID. So it really is a function of a lot of people having left the workforce. And the big question mark is whether they come back. And I think we should see a significant number of those come back as we move into the new year and the household balance sheet situation deteriorates a little bit as people in eat into their savings and are then essentially forced back into the workforce uh, as we move into 2022.